Hello, everyone, and welcome to case number nine in MSK Unknown Case Series. Today's or this week's session, we have a lateral view of the left elbow. And we can see here that this is a nice lateral view. We can see the distal humerus, the proximal ulna, and the radius here. We can see the normal articulation at the radiocapitellar and the trochlear ulnar joint. We see a small enthesophyte, which is an osseous protuberance along the olecranon at the triceps tendon insertion. But the question that I have for all of you today is which of the following statements is true based on the pathology that's shown on this lateral view of the elbow? Is the finding pathognomonic for fracture? Is the finding shown, can it be seen as a result of infection? The presence of an anterior fat pad is always abnormal or a radial head fracture should be suspected in a child. Which of those statements is actually true? And I'll give you a couple seconds to ponder upon what you think the answer is. All right, so the true statement here is that the finding shown can be a result of infection. So if we take a look here, we have presence of an anterior fat pad. In fact, this anterior fat pad, which is this triangular lucency or dark area here, uh, it's enlarged and it's, it's displaced somewhat anteriorly. This is known as the sail sign because it resembles the, you know, the shape of a sail on a boat. So this is the sail sign or enlargement or displacement anteriorly of the anterior fat bed. And we have the presence of a posterior fat bed, again, a triangular lucency here um, that we see here. And this indicates that there is a joint effusion. All that this indicates when you see presence of a posterior fat pad or enlargement or displacement anteriorly of an anterior fat pad that indicates that there's an effusion. Now we should never see a posterior fat pad. So if we see a posterior fat pad on a lateral view of the x-ray that's done appropriately, that indicates the presence of a joint effusion. You can normally see an anterior fat pad, but it shouldn't be this large and it certainly shouldn't be displaced anteriorly the way this is. So the fact that it's enlarged and it's displaced anteriorly, that indicates that there's a joint effusion. So this lateral view of the elbow indicates that there's a joint effusion. Now, this presence alone is not pathognomonic for a fracture. However, in the setting of trauma, let's say that this patient fell, then this would be pathognomonic for a fracture. So, you know, there are other causes of a joint effusion in the elbow. For example, infection, septic arthritis can result in a joint effusion. Inflammatory arthropathies like rheumatoid arthritis, gout, they can give you joint effusions. But in the setting of trauma, if the patient has fallen, then you should suspect that there is a fracture, whether or not you can see it. So in this case, this patient did fall and we see a, a joint effusion with the presence of a posterior fat pad and the sail sign anteriorly, we should suspect that there's a fracture here. And if we don't see it, we should maybe do an MRI to assess for an occult fracture. An occult fracture meaning a fracture that we suspect clinically, but we don't see radiographically. The most common place to get a fracture in an adult would be the radial head or neck. So this area right here, by far the most common. But in a child, the most common place to have a fracture would be the supracondylar humerus or this area right here. Okay, so, you know, this is a nice example of what a joint effusion looks like, its implications, and whether or not we uh, can have fractures or not. So, of course, this finding is not pathognomonic for fracture. It would only be pathognomonic in a setting of trauma. Um, this finding can be shown as, a, can be seen as a result of infection in case of septic arthritis, a joint effusion can always be present. The presence of an anterior fat pad is always abnormal. That's not true. You should always have an anterior fat pad, but if it's displaced or enlarged, that would be abnormal. And the presence of a posterior fat pad is always abnormal though. And a radial head fracture should be suspected in an adult, not a child. So the answer here is B. And this is a nice review of radiographic signs of a joint effusion and their implications for, for diagnosis and management. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please tune in next week for MSK case number 10 for another high yield topic that is very relevant for radiology education and the board exam. Thank you so much.